Every yeah. day is a new beginning, so yeah. each day we prepare our minds to take full advantage of what the day holds. So do something today that your future self would be grateful for. It's the final Thursday in the month of January, Woo! so let's make it a good one. Definitely. Good morning and welcome to your breakfast show. Yeah. The best breakfast show on Nigerian television, yes. Wake Up Nigeria. And you made it. You made the right choice. Yes. You joined us this morning for mm -hmm. our Artsy Thursday edition. Yes. And as you can see, we're all colorful. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we have our colors. And you are flying somewhere yes, today, I'm definitely you are. flying I somewhere. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, There's actually so much going to happen right here on the show today. Of course, we have the kitchen. We have so much more. Thank you for joining us. We are about to create more memorable moments with you. My name is Winfrey Agbele here. And I'm Titi Laya Oyi. So you can, of course, join us live on GoTV Channel 27 mm -hmm. or UHF Channel 49. You can also yeah. download the TVC app for both Android and iOS stores so you have on-the-go access to us all day, every day. All right. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn yeah. at TVC Connect. Send in your comments using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. So let's tell them what we have for the day, shall yeah. we? We have our book review happening today. The book chat is on a book titled The Broken Pieces, mm. The Pursuit of Power, Pleasure and Politics. Let me take that one more time. The Pursuit of Power, Pleasure, Politics and Hope. Uh -huh. Yeah, I had to add the hope part. Yeah. Hope A.K. Jr. is an educator, entrepreneur. He's also the author of The Art of Living, a self-help book for personal development. For art display, we have some unique art pieces from Kali Balogun, also known as Kalitemi Art. His art comes from a deep evergreen point within him that, that also tends to express nature in her most natural state. All right. The final Thursday in the month of January. Wow. January was, this was, I think, the quickest January I've yeah. experienced. Really? A lot of people said no. Yeah. Mm. So it was actually really fast for me. I don't know. It's, I think it depends on how you approach it and, and how you start. How do you want to approach it again? You sleep and wake up. Uh, what? What, 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 what did you say? What's the date again? 20, 26, I think. 26. Okay, but next week is still January. Ah, <laughs> till Tuesday. Just a, two, exactly, just a day. Tuesday. That's half of your week already. Tuesday is not half of the week. Half of the working week. <laughs> no way. Yes. Tuesday is not half, half of the week. Half of the working week. Tuesday is 31st, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, it still gives people a lot of time to get to that. the bank. Mm. I'll say that. So um, if you have a colo anywhere under your bed, in the back of your cupboard, or maybe your kids have been saving, you need to go and break those colo right now so that you can... <laughs> yeah. You can go and submit that cash to the bank. Mm. Uh, and, and really, I actually think uh, most parents should have bank accounts for their kids. Uh, yes, of at course. At least from the time they're one year old. Because mm. that first birthday, parents <laughs> be giving them money, or the other parents be giving them money on that first birthday. Just go. Uh, take yeah. okay. we'll so get right to now, that. we actually have to take <laughs> the weather. We'll be right back. Time for the news. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, says the strike by the staff of a Nigerian aviation handling company, NACO, over salary issues is illegal and a threat to national security. The minister also apologized to the flying public and promised that such inconvenience caused by striking workers will not happen again, as the Fan Act signed into law by President Buhari last year prohibits industrial action and riots in the aviation sector. The minister also said the implementation of the Fan Act will take full effect to prohibit actions that will pose a risk to the flying public. First and foremost, uh, it's unfortunate and we regret. And I don't want, um, like I said, when I do this press briefing, if you bring tangential issues, they dominate, the, uh, they become the news. So please do just this memo first. Otherwise, next time you ask me questions, I'll just say another day. You know. But this is very important for traveling public, really. First, we apologize to them, our team passengers, in this difficult moment. And two, also to know that um, um, this may not happen in the past by the grace of God, or in the, in the future by the grace of God. And the reason is simple. Aviation is an essential service. The act has been assented by Mr. President. So strikes and riots around our airports are prohibited by law of the land. 
And now that we have the act in place, uh, assented by Mr. President, passed by National Assembly, we will deal with it according to the law. The presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Tinubu, says attempts by some persons to sabotage his chances won't stop his victory in the February 25, 2023 poll. Ashiwa Jutinubu, who spoke during the party's rally at the MKO Abiola Stadium in Abiyakuta, the urban state capital, also said there is a plot by some saboteurs to stop the 2023 general elections from holding. He said fuel scarcity and the redesign of a three naira note won't dissuade his supporters from voting him in. He assured the people of the state that he will end fuel scarcity if elected, saying next month's presidential poll is a revolution. Ashiwaju urged the people of the state to get their permanent voters card, saying he will take over government through PVCs. Timbu took time to thank the people of the state for their support. I guarantee you one thing. There will be student loan. Nobody will drop out of university because of school fees. I guarantee you that. We have to repeat one class for eight years and not graduate. Abba. We are too smart. We are brilliant. We are courageous. We will make four years course, four years more. Then onto the foreign scene, uh, President Joe Biden on Wednesday announced that the United States will be sending 31 Abrams, Ab Abrams tanks to Ukraine in its war against Russia. He said the U.S. will also provide the necessary training and supplies needed to operate and run these tanks. The president said sending the tanks will enhance Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives because they are the most capable tanks in the world. The U.S. announcement about its tank commitment comes the same day. Germany also pledged to send Ukraine 14 of its own Leopard 2 tanks. Early Wednesday, now Germany confirmed it will supply Ukraine with uh, the tanks and approved requests by dozens of other countries to do the same. The U.K. has also committed 12 of its own Challenger 2 battle tanks, and Poland has asked Germany for permission to send the Leopards it has in stock. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the newspapers this morning. And we're going to start with the Daily Trust. Today is Thursday, January 26th, 2023. 38 herders killed in Nasarawa air raid. Our innocent members were killed by Air Force, say Makban. Drone used for shelling pastoralists, uh, Governor Sule says here. Uh, it's the, it is worst evil of profiling, say Northern elders. And they assure investigation. Uh, beneath the masthead there, it says bandits reject 5.3 million Naira old notes in Kaduna, say deadline approaching. Used vehicles import crashes 40% and uh, with customs valuation scheme. 20th Daily Trust Dialogue holds today in Abuja. And in our photo story here, if I can get that zoomed in, um, I'm afraid I can't see the caption at the bottom of the story. It's a little too faint, uh, but the headline just beneath it says, uh, Tinumbu fuel crisis, Nara redesign, ploy to sabotage elections. We won't accept postponement. Uh, probe Ashwaju, say PDP, and presidency, CBM, uh, APC, keep mum. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Trust. We also have the Nation newspaper with us. It says here, Tinumbu, fifth columnist, Behind petrol scarcity, Nara redesign row. Uh, there are plots to embarrass Buhari and scuttle elections. The story starts there on the cover and wraps up on page four. Those plotting to deal with me won't win elections, says Wike. Abdul Razak signs 188.8 million Nara budget. Uh, it says here, uh, Messi rejects new PSG contract. Page 31 has more on that. Top left here, it says, how Africa can banish food insecurity, according to Buhari. Bomb blast kills 51 in Nasarawa. Victims get mass burial. Uh, impeachment, AKT court, orders parties to file processes. 
Now, U.S. slams visa ban on enemies of democracy. And I'll wrap it up with this one, just beneath the masthead there. No cash supply at ATM points over scarcity of new notes. And that's what we have on the cover of The Nation. All right. Now it's uh, Thursday. Mm. Uh, and we're here again uh, looking out for interesting stuff that pops up, especially online. Uh, and something that struck me was the fact that uh, apparently outside Nigeria, um, there was a particular lady that's being talked about because she decided to sue her boyfriend. Now, the reason why this is news is because apparently her boyfriend is a bank manager uh, of a very prominent bank in Ghana. Uh, and uh, there's actual legal proceedings going on because he made some promises to her. Now, I want to come from the angle of, I don't know whether, I don't know the true details of what they went through during their relationship, however the relationship started, how it ended. Isn't that a boyfriend, um, no? The sugar, yeah, sugar daddy, daddy that is married. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Wow. Thank you. That gives a uh, context. No. Okay. And and why she will no, be able to sue the man no. rightly. Because right. sugar... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, All right. Rightly. So it's not just because he's a bank manager, mm -hmm. but because he comes across as a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. He's also her boss. Works for him as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. The plot yeah. thickens. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you... His name is Enes Kwasi Nimako. Mm. Yeah. And he's the director of finance of a bank. So that's mm. major. Mm. Mm. And um, he's expected to appear. Uh, let me just... Uh, he's expected <laughs> to appear in court to actually answer this. He said, he said that yeah, he made a promise to divorce his wife and marry her. Mm -hmm. And when the promises start becoming... Uh, um, Bind. hmm. Grounds, bind yes to grounds to see as what kind, what which lawyer is representing her? What is the lawyer holding on to? Hmm. What does it was a, she yeah, have? Yeah, the promise. Did she, did she? Was it a in writing? Well, yes. I don't mean if it's in writing. Was it? Is it a legally legally approved? If it's in writing and they sign it, yes, it is. Hmm. Legally Who we'll signed it? I just pick up a piece of paper. I just write something and yes, you just sign. Yes, I'm signing it. It's binding. Bro. It's binding, eh? It is binding. Wow. <laughs> Once the agreement is made by two people, it's written and it's signed, it's in mind. That's so, what they, they tell you, I encourage you that whatever you're doing business-wise, you always put down, down on paper. But it's interesting, though. I, I, I'm thinking, first of all, the demands. I know that there was a car in there, there was like a certain amount of money in there that he promised to be giving her monthly. I'm like, when did this thing become such a structured uh, arrangement? I always thought it was something in the shadows, like, she's literally coming out to say, this is what he promised me. Uh, and obviously, it's definitely going to have, give him challenges in his, his marriage. That's if he's still married. I can't clarify that. Okay, um, the, I think for me, when I think about the story, right, it's coming from the angle of him being married, mm. one, and also being her boss. Mm. You never know the information she's privy to. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So mm. I think that's where her boldness, that's where mm -hmm. she's getting boldness and she do something like this, feeling that, okay, fine, mm. she, he will probably reach out to her to maybe settle out of court or something. Wait, present boss or former boss? Hell. Yeah, but but uh, the point now is that even, even if um, whatever she has, this is enough ground for... Some people might even go as far as dismissal mm. because this is inappropriate. Extremely. It, uh, it's with a staff, or mm. you understand, a subordinate. Yeah. yeah. You're married mm. and all of that. So we, I, I, we, I do know within the, what she has. Mm. Do you mm. understand? But I don't think that the guy when they were getting the relationship say, okay, I'm going to do my side check. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, sign here. Things happen like that. <laughs> and all of that. This is what I'm going to do. Theory, yeah. I, I, you know? I don't. But I can see how you're giving us some TikTok moves and of all of course. that. Cook. No, but I'm, I'm actually trying to think about if, if, for instance, you were a judge on such such a case, what would what would what you would look, I, what would you look to? What, what, would, what are the things you would be considering in such a case? I, I don't know how how to take it seriously. Well, I, obviously, I'm not in that that field. Like how I would take it seriously, and then whose side I would actually take. You have no idea what the sugar that is judges these girls. Sorry. I, didn't I would not like to say that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you. I said you have no idea what the sugar that is due to these girls. Okay. Now, yes. according, according, and also, now the, she has a set of demands, and these are a set of demands. Transfer mm -hmm. the title of a car into her name. I don't know which car is talking about. Cost of repairs. I don't know what he's repairing. Mm. 10,000 Ghanaian CDs. Mm. Um, pay lump sum money to enable her start a business. Wow. Pay remaining two years, remaining. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
pay the outstanding areas of her monthly allowance from July to the date. Wow. And pay all medical expenses as a result of side effects. Side effects of what? Side effects of what? That's what I was telling you. You have no idea wow. what this guy is. Who so somebody, they're, they're different, somebody different said that, but so short. Yeah. You don't know. Mm. It can be side effect of headache. Uh, ah. Headache that of seeing uh, the, the, the... This is what I'm saying like that. Demands. Mm. One of the strangest things mm. I've heard this month, actually. Yeah, but uh, hey, hopefully we'll be getting your comments and contributions on that as well. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and let's Stay with hear your thoughts. Welcome to the Wake Up Nigeria kitchen, and uh, here with me, is Chef David. Hi, Chef David. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. How do you feel being on Wake Up Nigeria today? I feel great to be here, honestly. You feel great to be here. Yes. Amazing. Okay, so now tell me, I have, I'm seeing a whole lot of protein right here. I'm seeing fish. I'm seeing kumo. I'm seeing all my other things. So tell me, what exactly are we making today? Okay, we'll be making a roll today with white rice and dodo. A furry roll with white rice and dodo. So yes. now, can you quickly run? This our uh, furry roll is an expensive furry roll. It's went to Harvard University. So can you quickly run me through the ingredients we need to bring this to life? Okay, to cook my furry roll, we'll be needing pepper, mm -hmm. then smoked title fish, mm -hmm. cow skin, mm -hmm. dried fish, mm -hmm. crayfish, mm -hmm. locust beans, mm -hmm. palm oil, mm -hmm. and seasonings. All right, amazing. I mean, we can see the the ingredients right there on your screen in case you want to try this out at home. Okay, so now tell me, run me through the process of uh, what exactly, um, how exactly um, a furrero is going to be made. Okay, what we have to do first is to bleach the oil. Okay. Which I have done that slightly. So slightly. there won't be, there okay. won't be uh, smoke okay. while doing that here. Okay. So after bleaching the oil, mm -hmm. then I will hide in my grounded pepper, the okay. blended pepper. Okay. Then after that, I'll allow you to fry a little, okay. then had my uh, proteins, Protein. then had the uh, locust beans, okay. had seasoning, mm -hmm. then leave it to cook very well. Okay. Then we had the vegetable. Okay, then mm -hmm. we add the vegetable. Yes. What the vegetable in particular are we using? F4. That's a, a four, a four. We, we, we are using a ugu, ugu leaf and Okay, because I know some people mix it. Up. Yeah, we mixed it. Yeah, yes. so ugu leaf and ugu leaf and a, a four uh, tete. Oh, Efortete. Okay, so now tell me, why did you choose this particular, uh, this particular um, protein? Because I see um, all of this. So tell me, is there a particular reason why you chose the, the fish, the kumo, and all that? Okay, for example, this locust beans, mm -hmm. it helps uh, to boost immune system. Okay. Then it works for the eyes. Then uh, there are some other benefits, benefits that it gives. Locust beans. Then the a lot of people don't know that. People would think it's just for natural flavoring no no no, no. it's not okay. just for flesh flavoring mm. alone it has a lot of health benefits oh nice so nice good to know okay so now tell me about the fish now this is this is tighter smoked fish tighter smoked yes. fish okay. there's this amazing taste it gives mm -hmm, at the end mm -hmm. of every cooking mm. so that's why i love that's why so it. now what type of fish is this this is a Cote fish. Cote, yes. and it's roasted. No, it's fried actually. Oh, it's fried. Yes. You actually fried it. So did you do that yourself? Yeah, I did that myself. Okay, so you season. What did you season it with, or you just fried it straight? You know, no, I seasoned it with uh, this. This seasoning we call lasso fish seasoning. Lasso. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And of course, um, we have our more here. What else is here? This is a uh, dry fish. Dry fish. Yeah, you ever call it a budo. Uh -huh. yeah, so I have to boil it so yes. that it will be tender. Okay. To eat. It won't be too hard. It's going to be too hard. Yes. Okay, and with aqua mother there. Then we have crayfish. 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 But yes. this looks like the bigger ones. The mature. Yes. Crayfish. I just have to break them into break pieces. It. So we're going to be using it like this in, yes, yes. in the so, so that you'll be able to absorb the the pepper on time. The pepper That's on why I time. Break them. Amazing. Okay, so now tell me, let's talk about you a little before we start. Okay. Cooking. So when did you start cooking and what spurred you into it? I actually started cooking in 2008. Mm -hmm. So then I, it was after I had my first daughter. No. So I was like, I want to be an amazing dad. No. Like, you know, <laughs> during any of the festive period, I can always, you know, like, I started with grilling actually. With grilling. grilling. Yes, okay. so that I can grill for my family. Maybe, you know, as time goes on, when I'm getting old, my children can invite their friends home over, over to, you, you know, you make uh, that kind of uh, okay. thing. Okay, yeah. and then you started cooking and you said enjoying it. Then I started cooking mm -hmm. and I started, you know, people started loving it and mm. I was like, 
Then one of my friends mm -hmm. now advised me, why not go fully into catering? Fully into catering. So, okay. That's why I decided. How many years ago was that? That was 2008. 2008. And you've been cooking since then until now? Yeah. What has that experience been like? Uh, cooking it's commercially? Been, it's, it's been amazing. Okay. But at the same time, there are ups and downs in cooking, you know, in terms of not having enough, you know, when, yes. you, when you don't have a very solid background, very because true. cooking requires a lot of training. morning and training true, and true, stuff like that. So I, I don't, I, I actually just have to like, you know, put everything into consideration. Yes, okay, thank you so much. We definitely are going to allow you to actually start the cooking process so that we actually see the great result that comes out okay. at the end of it. But in the meantime, we actually have um, book chats with Mike standing by. Mm -hmm. I was not hearing what uh, the food was, the food was louder than your voice, but looking forward to what you guys have in store there. We Later on, we'll get back to see how far they are going with what they are doing. Now it's time for our book chat, and uh, the book is titled The Broken Pieces, The Pursuit of Power, Pleasure, Politics, and Hope. Now, Hope A.K. Jr. is the author of this book. It is great to have you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So, uh, I, from what I can see here, I, okay, I like the way it starts. To, you have uh, something here. The forward says, in memory of our heroes past and those scarred in defending their fatherland. Now, yeah. I, I, I particularly have a soft spot for armed forces. I mean, for peace to be there, people are fighting and giving their lives and all of that. What inspired you? to write this book you know it definitely means that you have something for the armed forces what inspired the writing of this um you know like for the past um what i'd say for about a decade now nigeria has been going through a whole lot with insurgency um in the whole country and that has actually been um every um political aspirant's um goal okay to to squash insurgency at all points so so for me and then um, there's so many people who have actually given their lives for this so, so it's, 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 it's good that actually um, we have a memory of them, okay, that we, we keep something for them, probably their kids could remember them by. Uh, um, um, so, so that's actually part of what inspired this book. Is this based on a true story or it's purely um, imaginational? Um, um, so many of these stories, mm. I would say some part of it is true. Okay. And then the other parts are fiction. Okay. Um, um, so, so, so there's just this, in, um, there's just this um, um, togetherness about it. It comes together. So, so for me, sometimes I'll be like, I can't even decipher anymore which is the which true is which, story yeah. and which is in. What do you, what, what do you hope to achieve with this? Um, I definitely believe that. Um, I definitely believe that in in Africa, um, in Africa, we have to tell our own stories. We definitely have to tell our story. So this is actually an African story um, with a background here in Lagos um, and also all around Nigeria, in the northern Nigeria, eastern Nigeria. So it cuts across um, every part of Nigeria. So for me, it, for me, this is our own story. So it's high time we start telling our own stories. It's high time we start telling exactly how it is. And then I think from there we can, we can improve, can mm. improve. Okay, so now this is a story of a young soldier who, uh, of course, uh, there's love inside, yeah. uh, insurgency, politics, and corruption. So just tell us the, the story in a nutshell of uh, Dozier. Dozier, that's okay, the story. Okay, okay. Um, Dozier actually, Dozier, Dozier grew up in a broken home. Okay. okay, before he was even grown, his father left the home. So before he even knew who, who his father was. So on one morning, so the father just resurfaced and then came back into their life. And, and then um, the mother had to introduce the father, okay, to mm. the son who was mm. already older and going okay. into the university. Mm. So later on, the father had an encounter, and then um, here Dozier was, and then he sent Dozier to school. And Dozier was in school and met um, I met a lady, Amanda. Then Amanda um, fell in love with Dozier. Um, then they kept on moving, and at some point, they fell apart. They fell apart. So, and then Dozier gradually, because he couldn't find the job after university, then he, he went into the military. But then his mother was like, hey, don't go into the military, you know, severance pay and blah, blah, and all that. But then he still went into the military. And then afterwards, um, his experience, his experience at the end, um, he, it wasn't really what he had expected. And then, he, and then at the end, he, he had to start regretting, oh, um, I, I wish I had listened to my mother, okay, at some point. So, isn't that some way kind of deterrent from 
making people join the armed force? No, 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 not like it's a deterrent, okay? Mm. People actually have to be in the armed force. People have to actually fight for the country. People have to mm. be in the forces. But then it's, um, it's, it shines the light. Actually, he, he had the goodness of being in the military too. Okay, he understood about how the military um, had an upper hand in so many things. They could go on the streets, okay, and um, just go on their own. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're a military person and then something's happening and then you just put up your ID card or tell whoever you are, okay, you go on. So, so for him, he enjoyed the good, goodness of being in the military. Mm. He had the apartments. If you keep getting into the book, he had the apartments. Um, he had a whole lot, okay, about the goodness of being in the military. But then also, everything that has a good side also had a bad side of it. Definitely, and that's where I want to come in there. Now, the broken pieces we'll talk about, even people that are in the military, you know that there is everybody has some some of some some uh, form of baggage okay. in some ways or the other. And how does this affect the life of the person when it comes to relating? Because now you know we see our police, we see our armed forces, and you know the way they relate with the normal human beings. And then you yeah. think about it, these people also like every other human being, like you said, upbringing also. Somebody who stayed without his father, and then at a particular point in time. It must have had some sort of a mental yes, effect yes, on this kind of person. Yes, yes. How does it, from what you have written here, the broken pieces, how does it affect the service of one's fatherland in such ways dealing with mental baggage from the past, trauma as it were, or psychological issues? How does it affect, you know, a soldier or somebody in the Air Force is serving the country and also, you know, in relating with the fellow citizens? I think the most important thing that we must all understand is that um, our backgrounds affect us in one way or the other, no matter how far we want to, want to disagree with that. So, so then, um, for that person to be in the military and then you have your own baggage, I would say, your own experiences, it affects them. Uh, I think that's why sometimes when they are back from um, fighting so much in the insurgency up mm. north or wherever, they have to go for rehabilitation and then they have to come back out to the world mm. because it's quite different mm. from there. So, so for me, that's why the book was actually dedicated to their memory because they're doing a whole lot for the country. The ones that are seven now, if they read this book, can it help them? And in what ways can it Oh, if they actually read this book, um, it's for, for me, this, this book, it's actually um, a, a motivation to every Nigerian. It's just, it's just putting out there that we should do better. Okay, it's mm. more like pointing, pointing out where we're going wrong, and then I think definitely we can do better. We can mm. do in better. In what ways exactly? Um, um, if, Did you if, point it out, and in what ways can we Okay, do? okay, like in the country, um, if we keep on moving, um, honestly, we would, we would realize that sometimes we have um, political unrest, we have this, we have this, we have that. But then all at once, it, it's all about us having um, a good mindset toward um, the greater populace. Okay, because here also we talked about politics. So it's about politics, how people play politics and how it's not actually helping the country at some point. But then at this point, I think it's important that we understand that um, if we're doing things for the greater good, that's why I said this is, this is Africa. So, so if we also look and then we do things for the greater good, then we'd understand that we can be as the Western world, but then it's not that we're competing with the Western world, no. But then we can be a developed country, not always being in the rank of a developing country. Mm, so, so that's the most important thing. So the force would have that, um, um, businesses would have that, um, organizations, individuals would be proud to be from Africa, to be from Nigeria, honestly. So that's why this story is actually on Africa, on Nigeria. So we must be able to tell our own stories. All right, well done, the broken pieces, the pursuit of power, pleasure, politics and hope. Yeah, that's it. That's a story. And like you said, uh, well done and uh, best wishes in your efforts. Thank you very with much. With what you're trying to do with this. Thank you very right, much. That's it. That's what we have on our book chat for now. We'll take a time out now. Stay with us. The Scrap Mode's Common Show. Welcome back. Now, it is an artsy Thursday, and we like to give the opportunity for many artists to come onto the show to give us mini exhibitions. Today on Art Display, we have some unique pieces from Khalid Balogun. He is known as Kalitemi Art. His art comes from a deep evergreen point. And I say evergreen for a reason. He has a special connection with nature. He tends to express nature made in her utmost natural state. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Hello. Um, first of all, thanks very much for having me on your show. You're welcome. I'm very happy. Honestly, I'm happy to, to meet someone like you uh, because... I feel you have a very deep connection with nature and you've decided to express it. Some artists, you know, paint pictures of things they see every single day, but you are connecting with nature. How did that begin? Yeah, you know, it's because of my roots, you know. I grew up in the Riverine area okay. in Delta State. 
and also my grandpa was a fisherman, so okay. naturally I just blended and loved mm. nature and I also get my inspiration from nature, so like I usually go to the ocean side or the lagoon side sometimes also connect, you know. And then go back to my studio and pour it out. <laughs> I, I, that term, pour it out, is interesting because they say artists can mostly express themselves through their art. Probably not through conversation, but when they put either pen or, or paintbrush to paper, you know, that's when you begin to hear their voice. Uh, let's talk a bit about the piece we have here. It's a beautiful frame, by the way. I love it. Thanks. Uh, what's the name of this piece? Uh, Tales of the Sun. Tales of the Sun. Yeah. What's the media you used? Uh, it was a charcoal, graphite, and colored pencils on acid-free paper. Charcoal, graphite, yeah. and colored pencils. pencils. On acid-free paper. All right. I'm going to bring this closer to me now because I can see a lot of intricate detail here. It looks like a rock face and then sunset. Yeah, Am I right? Sure. sure. This is sunset. Yeah. And then there's some little trees in the background, but it's not like a forest or anything. Is this supposed to be like a beach or a hillside? Uh, this is just a, like a mountain, actually. A mountain. It's a mountain. So you need to talk to us about how you use these mediums, because I know, uh, you know, we all use pencils in school, but we never use them for things like this. Yeah. You know, you know that's like they say, there's some things that don't have explanation. Mm. I can only show you how to do it. I can't really use my mouth to explain okay. <laughs> how I use the graphite with the charcoal and stuff. Mm. But I use graphite. You see that it's kind of like some parts of the rock are kind of like shining and stuff. Yes. Yeah, I use graphite because graphite has kind of like glossy effect on it. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that's how I blended it. And then I made sure I added green to it because mm. that's part of my, like, what I do. You know, I'm a green artist, a natural mm. artist. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, you, were, you and I were speaking earlier on how long it takes to put one of these together. Because of all the details, how long did it take for you to put this piece together? This work, it looks easier than it is. <laughs> it looks easier, yeah? Two weeks. It took me two weeks. Two weeks to two complete weeks. this? Yeah. Um, now, for those that don't know, if you're using things like charcoal, pencils, do you use canvas or do you use paper or do you use cardboard? Because... It feels like uh, canvas would probably have a different effect when you when you rub uh, charcoal against it. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So it, it depends on my mood, you know. Okay. Art is a process, and I enjoy the process. So any medium I feel like using at the time, I use. So I also use canvas. Yeah. For this exhibition. Mm. Yeah. For this exhibition. Yeah. I use the um, paper. Paper. Yes, ma'am. Paper. Yes. All right. I know that it's not just any white paper. There's one, this one uh, on the floor to my right is what we're seeing on the screen. Can you tell us about this piece? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah? It's about, you know, all my, these tales of this on one. Okay. Yeah. So I got a photographer to help me take this pic, like, directly and sent it to me. Okay. In worry. He took this in worry. Mm. Yeah, so if you look at the poem I've wrote under this artwork, Tales of the Sun, mm. it's just basically explaining the process of photosynthesis. Okay. Photosynthesis, yeah. So, you know, like, at, this, um, like, sunlight, you get, is actually the mother of nature herself because mm. nothing natural exists without the sun okay. being the first thing in the process. Honestly, your connection with nature is, is really admirable, but... Let's think about those who you believe will connect to your work. Who are your most, you know, unique customers? Who are the people that you didn't really expect would really like your art? You know, just like I always say, creating scenery with voices. Mm. My artwork is speak to you, anybody, any age. Any age? <laughs> to everyone. Really? Yeah. Can you teach this process? Can you teach someone to create pieces like this? You have to be true to yourself, you know. Okay. And actually, nature is something that comes naturally. There's no one. You just have to find the connection with nature and then express yourself. And any, whatever you feel like doing at the time, yeah. what makes you happy? Do it. Do. There are a lot of birds in this particular piece. Okay. Is this also charcoal, pencil, and uh, graphite? Oh, yeah. This, no, this is actually just charcoal and, uh, just charcoal and colored pencils. 
charcoal and colored pencil. What's what's she called? Also, Tales of the Sun, I think four or five. <laughs> four or five. So it's like a whole story uh, that you put together with, with this particular uh, collection. Speaking of collections, you had an exhibition recently, yes? Yeah. You did? Yes, I did, uh, December 17th. Okay. So what was that about? Yeah, it was my debut solo exhibition. Yeah, I just thought about it. Yeah, like, let me have a solo show also, you know. Mm. After, you know, as an artist, you have to go a step ahead in every time. Okay. So, me and Mr. Abolore, the owner of Jealousy Me Art Center, we had a discussion. I said, okay, how will it be possible for me to have an exhibition at your place? Mm. He said, okay, sure. But then he gave me option of either a solo or, or a group exhibition, yeah? <laughs> These are so detailed and so intricate. They look really amazing. I, I can only imagine how you are in your element when you're putting these together. Look at these palm trees, amazing stuff. Uh, now this is um, us seeing a part of you that is extremely connected with nature and um, I feel like it's inspiring someone out there to maybe, you know, uh, maybe start their own artwork or maybe even just take some proper pictures of nature right now. I have to say thank you, Khalid, yeah, for coming to show us your pieces. All right, man. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't wait to see more of his work. And you should tell us how you think, uh, what you think about his pieces as well. Use our hashtag WakeUpNiger on TVC. Winfrey is standing by with our chef in the kitchen. How's it going? It's going great, TT. Thank you so much. Still here with Chef Dave. We're still making our Eforiro and rice with plantain. So, Chef, chef, chef Dave, how far? Where are we now in this uh, journey, on yeah. this journey? How it far is, have we it gone? Is, it is moving gradually. It's moving, right? Yes. So, so now tell me, what exactly do we have in our pots? So What's happening there? So we have our vegetable the boiling. Yeah. And we have our oil bleaching. So soon we will add the pepper to the oil. Okay, so, so wait. That from... vegetable, did you put water in it? Yes, I added a little water. Oh, okay. And okay. salt. And salt. Why yes. are you boiling it separate? Because I, I didn't know normally you just put it directly. Mm, so yeah, just... you need to add to, so, uh, salt to it to give taste yes, after no, cooking. Yes, yes. Yeah. So... That's the reason why. Yes, then, I'm talking about the water now. The water. And why even boiling it first? Yeah, because I want the uh, acidic content in it to be removed. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're going to drain the water yeah, out? Yeah, I'll drain the water oh, out. Oh, before pour, you put it into the mix? Water. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, because I know normally we just put the leaves and vegetables straight into the food while we're cooking it. It is actually good to boil. If you boil and rinse, doesn't that wash out all the nutrients? No, it doesn't. Uh, you should, okay. Okay, because I know my mom used to tell me, even don't wash your vegetables before you cut it, or rather after you cut it, so that uh, it doesn't reduce the nutritious uh, value. But yeah, I mean, we learn every day, and this is 23, yeah. so yeah. Okay, so... So the vegetable is ready. So, so the vegetable to, is ready. Yes, we have to drain the water. We have to drain the water. Yes. Okay, we'll do, we'll, we'll do that. So why are you doing that? Yes. We add our pepper... Into... Into the oil. The oil, yes. amazing. Okay. That's a lot of pepper. Yeah, we're not using everything, actually. So I okay. thought, thought we were having a bigger pot <laughs> to cook for the whole TV crew. You want to cook for the whole uh, TV crew, neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very generous chef. That's very good. generous. <laughs> OK. But yeah, everything is coming together nicely. And here, of course, we have our water, right? Yes. On fire it for our rice. For rice. Yes. So now we'll be washing the rice. We'll wash the rice and put it and put in it the fire. Inside, yes. yes. Okay, I mean, I think we're, we're making progress. We're making progress. We're also having plantain on the side, yes. and uh, we're definitely slicing that and dicing it as well. Okay, nice. Is your daughter watching? Or oh, how many kids do you have now? I have two kids. Two, okay. Yeah. Are you watching? Of course. Oh, of course you're watching. Yeah. I'm sure they're so proud. That is an air. And yeah, we're the reason why he started cooking. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why I started cooking. Yeah, so yeah. now tell me about Omaba Foods. Is that your thing? Yeah, that's my brand name. Oh, your brand name. Tell me, so what is Omoba Foods about? What kind of food do we have there? It's here. In Omoba Foods, what we do basically mm. is small chops, mm. grills, oh. and catering you services. You did say you started with grilling. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yes. So small chops, grilled, grills and... Grills in aspect of uh, like barbecue chicken, barbecue chicken. fish, okay. turkey, asun, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Okay. Then different dishes. You know, for any kind of event. Oh, any kind of event. So you make yes. food for events. Yes, now. I do. Okay, amazing. But we don't have. A, do we have an outlet? No, I do don't have an outlet. Yeah. I, I work from home. From home. And I do. I do online. 
deliveries, deliveries as well. I mean, that's very, very important, especially in this day and time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because a lot of people, well, young men, even women right now, they don't necessarily want to cook anymore, so they want to order food. So people are actually making a like, good buck money. How much, how much did you make in December? Just <laughs> estimates, give us rough, rough estimates. To go with the glory, we're able mm -hmm. to make some money. I some can't, money, I can't, you don't want to, he doesn't I say, can't, I can't ah. how much. I you don't want to disclose so that uh, yeah. they don't kidnap you, Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Chef David is still here doing this thing. There's still so much to come right here on Wake Up Nigeria. We have to go because it's the top of the hour. We're going to start it all over again. Just stay tuned. It's been an amazing artsy one hour so far, and we have quite a bit more exciting times on the show coming your way. So keep it moving. Don't settle, but stay right there. <laughs> Hope you're definitely enjoying this journey as much as we are. Stick with us and watch us add some brightness mm. to your day. We're definitely bright. Look how bright we are today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I, I think a lot of things are bright and beautiful in that kitchen. Uh, this morning, Winfrey, yeah. how's it going with all it's those going, I mean, ingredients? Chef David Hi, is Chef. All over that. You can wave at us, Chef. You can wave at us. Wave, wave, wave. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, then. We have quite a lot still to come in the yeah. remaining 45 minutes of the show. Thank you so much for staying right there with us. Uh, <laughs> Chef has been working really hard, as yeah. we said earlier mm -hmm. on. Uh, but let's tell them what else we have coming up. Okay, my name is Winfrey Agbodeshi. Before we jump into that, right? <laughs> my <laughs> name is Titilayo Oinso. Of course, if you're watching now, uh, you can also watch us live on GoTV Channel 27 and UHF Channel 49. The app is available for you to download for Android and iOS uh, for on the go access. Do also well. follow us on social media Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Teams Connect. Send in your comments using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on yeah. TVC. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we still have a book chat coming your way, people. Yes. We still have a book chat. Yes. And that is going to be a really interesting one. Um, we Own Your Own yes. is the name yes, of okay. the book that we're working on. Olufisayo mm. Odebode is the author of that book. And we can't wait for that conversation. And I mean, it's still the month of January. It's a brand new year and books are definitely one way to get enough tips and tricks and possibly hacks for the year. So we do have a second book chat right about now. And the book in my hand definitely is Own Your Stuff by Olufisayo Odebode, who is an author. She's definitely passionate about rebuilding broken communities. She definitely is fondly called Fisayo Chek. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Good morning and thank you for having me. You look so nice. I told you, your earrings are so gorgeous. <laughs> thank your you. Your shoes are points. Oh my God. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so now I actually, you said this is actually your first book. Yes. All right. So now let's talk about how you got to this point where you felt the need to write a book. Um, at first, it was like me just documenting some of my life experiences, some okay. of my lowest point in life. Okay. And um, in trying to document that, I now started to you know, conceive the idea of actually um, using the book to inspire other people to okay. take ownership of their lives. Because okay. um, sometimes, I, I keep saying this, mm -hmm. you don't determine what life throws at Very you. True. Um, but you can always determine how you respond to the situations and circumstances Very you know, true. in your life. Very true. Um, so I wrote the book just to inspire and encourage people mm -hmm. and to find a way to um, connect pe with people who are going through very difficult times. Very we true. live in a very difficult community, <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> and so um, it's very easy for you to blame your lack of success, your true. lack of... Um, effectiveness you know mm -hmm. on the challenges in mm -hmm. Nigeria mm -hmm. you know and the environment that we live in yeah. but um you don't determine these things <laughs> you, you don't. don't determine the family you don't. that you are born it's in you know. yeah but you can leverage the good things about yourself and the good things that happen around you okay too. so now you spoke about experiences we do like a good story here so if you don't mind if it's not pride too much would you like to share one or two it doesn't have to be in detail of the experiences you just really went through um, that was um, rock bottom for you um, one of them, yeah. 
is uh, my experience as a student in school. Okay. Um, it that took is me tough. about yeah, it took me about ten years to get my bachelor's degree. Oh, that wow. was supposed to last four years Federal because of the, University. Yes, because I of the health Abby. issues actually okay, okay, that okay. I had. I okay, had okay. Um, health issues, two different health issues that lasted about 17, 17 months together. Oh wow. And um, I also had, um, but you know, this, this systemic failure, the decadence in our systems right sure. here in Nigeria. Sure. Sure. Um, it's, not, it's not a big deal to be ill, even though sure. it affects the individual. Yes. Um, I also contributed to uh, mm -hmm. some of that because I didn't communicate at the right time okay. when I was going through some of the things that I was going through. Okay. Um, that uh, is a major life experience that, you know, took me to one of the lowest points in my life where I thought, I mean, I was just going to lose it all. Wow. Um, so I think I'll just stay with that. You stay with that. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. And that's good enough to be very yeah. honest. So now you now decided, you know what, I'm not just going to lie, lie around. I'm definitely going to own my stuff. And mm -hmm. then you put this together. So definitely um, tell me about the, 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 the chapters in this book. We're talking about a close look at you. Yeah. Quit the blame game. Yeah. And uh, let go of the past. So now in, in, in summary form, can you tell me about these first three chapters? These first three chapters, yeah. you mean? Um, a close look at you is about self-awareness. Okay. Um, when we talk about self-leadership, it's about uh, having a matured sense of who you are mm -hmm. and leveraging that um, knowledge of who you are to be more successful in life. So um, that chapter introduces to um, how you can have uh, a good interpersonal relationship with, with yourself. yourself. Very important. Um, the second one is quit the blame game. Yes. And that's where I told the story mm -hmm. um, about my clearance in school mm -hmm. and all the <laughs> manner of issues that I experienced, you know, yeah. on campus trying to see one lecturer do this mm -hmm, and do that. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting story. Okay. Um, and I use that to, um, in as much as I mentioned the challenges with the society, with the mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and my health issues, I was able to um, highlight my own part mm -hmm. that I played in contributing to slowing my uh, success, which is success is simply the achievement of goals. Yeah. I wanted to achieve obtaining my degree. Okay. So um, one of the things I did was to highlight my own part. Yes. You know, I took responsibility yes. for where I made my own mistakes and where I didn't do as well. Okay. And the third one that you mentioned yes. is Let go letting of go of the past. Yes. So um, I was molested as a child. Oh, wow. And when you have this kind of experiences, it kind of has a way of lingering Very in your true. heart. And then you hold people in unforgiveness. True, true, um, true. Doesn't even matter whether they are close or they are not, mm -hmm. you know, but the impact of what they've done to you, it stays. And somehow, somehow, it becomes really difficult to forgive. Um, we are not God. And so sometimes after we are forgiven, we find it difficult to forget. To forget. So I just kind of highlighted uh, ways in which you can navigate um, this kind of yeah, uh, parts in life. Yes, yeah, yes. So forgiveness and even though you will hold on to this story, it mm -hmm. might not leave, but you will find a way to still be effective, be efficient and mm -hmm. be a successful person in spite of everything. Amazing. So now the last four chapters, managing rejection, what do you see? What is your posture? That one caught my eye. Be of good <laughs> courage. Now talk to me about what is your posture? What is your posture? Yeah. Um, so um, what I try to get at in that chapter mm -hmm. is that the posture of your heart sometimes determine how much help, how much support okay. that you get from people around you. Sure. Um, sure. If you feel like you will not be able to get this, you will not be able to get it. Sure. So I highlighted a posture of thanksgiving, um, a grateful heart. A grateful you, heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's um, when you leave a life of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult for you to be depressed and True. to stay on the things that are not working True. in your life. If you can count, you know, your blessings. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked about the posture of humility, I think, um, mm -hmm. in that chapter as well. You know, staying humble, not mm -hmm. having a, <laughs> um, a swollen <laughs> esteem yeah. of who you are and mm -hmm. all of that. And mm -hmm. so that's just what... Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, having... So the question I actually wanted to ask from that post um, um, chapter is, I mean, at this point, I'm talking about um, people being at their lowest lows. How is it possible to remain in a posture of gratitude, to yeah. look past everything you're going through and then actually stay in a point of gratitude? From your personal experiences, how were you able to achieve that? Um, so the first thing mm -hmm. that helped me was my relationship with God. Okay. Um, and knowing that um, he loves me still mm -hmm. and um, life is just full of ups and downs. Sure. Um, there is nothing that I am going through or anyone is going through that is not common, common okay. to man. In trying to, for example, in trying to clear myself in school, I saw people who had longer years True. standing True. issues and I was like, oh, for real, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. Even though as a student, I saw people who should have graduated that didn't graduate. But as at that time, I had spent some more years and I saw some other big, massive cases. Mm -hmm. And so, um, not necessarily that you have to think of the worst situation, but you have to think about the little things, things. that are working in your life. Everything cannot be working, cannot not be not working. Not be working, right? You have to find <laughs> At the it. same time. True, true, so you have true. to search within yourself. Very true. Yes. Okay. I mean, even the fact that one's alive, yeah. you understand, you're breathing, that's mm -hmm. also free. So, yeah, of course, true. we definitely have to be grateful about that. Elizabeth Brett told me you have a great voice. <laughs> Just saying. Just, is well, that true? Who it's a bad is line. That I want that this bed. <laughs> very disturbing bed. <laughs> so you sing as well? Do yes, you I sing? Do. Oh, I great. Do. Oh, do you want to drop a line or two? Just for the. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, no. So let's, let's hear you. Okay. Um, my last <laughs> single, Good For Me. Oh, no. Nice. Um, I wrote it also because mm. um, I wrote it during the pandemic. Oh, no. Nice. It was a time when people were. Not it was just an uncertain period mm. and not knowing what to do. So I felt a little bit depressed during that time. And then I took a walk within the estate and I started to just tell myself, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. it will still be good. No matter how, how we bad, yeah, rich, I, you know, <laughs> and yes. so the song is good for me. Okay. Anyway, anyhow it goes, mm -hmm. it will be good for me. Aww. I mean, I, speaking to you alone is inspiration, do you yeah. understand? And I hope you guys out there are literally um, listening to this very interesting interview and learning a thing or two because it's very, very important for you to own your stuff, especially at the beginning of this year. 2023 literally has different possibilities, so definitely do not limit yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Thank a you pleasure for having, me. having you. Hopefully you'll be singing with us here. I mean, you have a full music career we have to explore, you know? Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, okay. So we have food let's for you, it. so you're not going anywhere oh. yet. Yes, you definitely have to try out what okay. we actually have um, in the kitchen for you. You. So yeah, let's go. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Our chef has actually been um, had at work oh, I'd together. Oh, I'd love to get pictures eating right. this No, food. of course, pictures we'll be taking, of course. <laughs> Yes, what's been happening here? Amazing. A lot of, a lot of. Huh? <laughs> Our chef has been going. I Will didn't know gaga. that all of this is happening here. <laughs> a lot uh -huh. is happening here. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Mike, calm down. You know that food excites you. I didn't know that. Nah. I didn't know. Don't know. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, no, I'm, I'm fasting. <laughs> you are fasting? <laughs> fasting, spare, wow. Spare fast. Mike. Eh? Spare fast. S-L-O-W. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right. Okay, so we have Welcome Chef Dan right here. Dave. He's Ooh. been hard at work. Chef Dan. Chef Dave. Dan. Mm. Dave. David. Chef David. Hi. <laughs> I'm Kristen Dew. Hi. <laughs> Apologies. So he's been hard at work putting together this F4 Rero rice planting. And of course, this amazing looking fish. So we'd love for you to try it out and let us know what you think about it. Uh -huh. All right. Have a yeah. taste. Please have a taste. <laughs> Mike, if I hear one more. Uh -uh. This bubble. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. What kind of fish is this, Chef Dave? Yes, I was going to ask that myself. Yes, so fish. what kind of fish? There's Cote? Yeah, there's Cote. Is that, is that yeah, we have, we have, huh? Which one's the other one? Yeah, we have a smoked tightwash fish. Ooh. We have a cow skin. We have so what do you think? And a dried fish. Ooh. And the vegetable. All of this fish. This can fish. I take some with me? Yeah, uh, of course you yeah. can. Oh my god, what kind of fish is this? That's Cote fish, actually. Cote. Hey! Wow, whoa. Cote. This is so Cote. good. Mm. Honestly, 
I honestly can't wait to say, taste it myself. But you know, <laughs> Thursdays. Yeah. We're fasting for wake up Nigeria. Run. <laughs> Thursdays run fasting. so <laughs> fast. Fasting. Please, I just want to mention that right? right? today is general <laughs> fasting for everybody. <laughs> All right, then, guys, we're going to be back again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Yeah. Have a great day. Focus on your fasting, you, everybody. General fasting. Bye.